You have a skew of uh, Final Fantasy XIV and Tell Endwalker, which is in a couple months. There were two, I think, for early access. I have pre ordered and everything, so I should have access at that time. That'll be fun. Let's see what Alize has to say. Ah, uh, Essegos, we're looking well. I take it you managed to squeeze in some rest. If you came hoping for the tidings from Kryle, I'm afraid we are still waiting. And we do have some old scraps of news to share. Scraps, she says. Luna Promise have been propping up all over the place, but their alliance has the situation well in hand, thanks in small part to Hori Boulder and the others. Meanwhile, thanks to the Beast Tribes... Uh, Talks with the Beast Tribes are going even better than expected. Encouraged by the Uldar's, pro Uldar's progress with the Amalja, Gridania has opened negotiations with the Ixal, believe it or not. All of which is obviously very encouraging, but with the Talofroy still uh, out there, it's not as if we can afford to lower our guard. Begging your pardon, but I come bearing an invitation from the Alliance. A council meeting is due to be held in Alamigo, and your attendance is humbly requested. Ah, we were just talking about the Alliance. May I ask what's on the agenda? I believe the intention is to share news on the recent developments and discuss what measures might be taken to combat the Telophore in concert with our new allies. The Beast Tribes have also been invited. It is hoped they will join us in the fight against our common foe. So the Alliance has, would bring all the Beast Tribes into the field as a single stroke. An ambitious plan to give in the delicacy of the negotiations, but may have been an expedient one, considering the threat we face. Indeed, my lady, and for their part, I am told the Beast Tribes have, been, uh, have agreed to attend. If the Science too are present, all of Eorzea will be represented. To arrange such a meet meeting must have been quite an undertaking, not only diplomatically, but practically. Pray, inform the Alliance that we would be honored to participate. We shall make for Alamigo without delay. Then I will bear your answer hither, thither with all haste. We look forward to receiving you at the Royal Palace. Well, now that we've accepted the invitation, what exactly, who exactly is going to attend? I move that you and Yishtola lead our contingent. Given how long you have worked to end summoning, it's only right that you be present for what promises to be a historic moment. I think we all played our part in this little, little endeavor, don't you, Essigus? All present may rightly claim a seat, I do quite agree. But by your leave, I believe I shall remain here and lend what assistance I can to the coordination of our defensive efforts. I'm not counted. I'm not coming either. Emmerich will be there, and I'd rather not be interrogated. Very well then. While there's a mind to hold the fort, those in mind of holding the fort get on with holding it. I suggest the rest of us make for our amigo, shall we? I noticed in this patch the lighting is different. It's kind of neat. At least during the uh, cutscenes.
It is. As a voiceover. Got Nanta, Malja, and it looks like we had a uh, Cobalt. Yep. Esteemed guests, you honor us with your presence. As there is much to discuss, let us begin. Information on our taken brethren you have, yes? Hear it, we would! Forgiveness these featherless ones are! With rivers of blood shall they pay! Freed our people must be! We too would see your kin liberated. But ere we attempt their rescue, we must first find a means to negate the risk of tempering. Without that, we will be unable even to approach the towers, let alone contend with their defenders. If all else fails, I've always found cannonballs quite effective. And what of the prisoners? Will you see them slaughtered? Think for a moment. Ponder, consider, think. If Merlwib truly intended to bombard the towers, she would have done so by now. Remember, we came here to find a solution together, did we not? Yistola spoke of defenders. I but offered a means to clear a path, should you require it. Given the enemy's capabilities, we will all need to play our part if we are to have any chance of success. For if any here should give less than their best, it will be to the cost of every living being on this star. A paragon? The Empire? Our very gods? How can we hope to prevail against such odds? That our foe is formidable, none would deny. But our strengths are many and varied. In this chamber, I see masters of strategy, masters of magic, masters of the land, the air, and the sea. And together, there is nothing in creation we cannot overcome. I beg your pardon? <laughs> what is it, Sir Walker? Do not express your passion thus! A little Chrissy will have deals, perhaps? <laughs> Suffice it to say, I am proud to be counted amongst the Aussie's finest. We, Sir Hagen, will play our part. We kobolds have not forgotten the crimes the Overdwellers committed against us in the past. But today we look to the future as allies united in purpose. Ah! Make mock of the Ixel the Paragon does! Turns kin into puppets! It's brother against brother. Free them from his grasp, we shall. As Patriarch Zadar will attest, the Scions have granted us a means to free your brethren from their thraldom. This boon we will gladly share, that your people might never be enslaved again. We accept, we accept! Praise me! taken a while, but I do believe we might be one step closer to a world without primals. 
Would that Minfilia were here to see it? We still have a long way to go, and we're going to need a lot more Porxies. But we're moving in the right direction. If I may have your attention, there is one other point I would like to raise. As we can all agree, freeing those held captive must take precedence over every other concern. But experience has taught us that none save those with the capacity to resist tempering can hope to enter the towers unscathed. And even once inside, a still greater threat may yet await them, that which we call a primal. Needless to say, if we are to succeed, engaging with such foes can only ever be considered a last resort. And so I move that we seek to prevent them from being summoned in the first place. Yes! Both prayer and ether are needed for the ritual. Should either one be denied, the summoning would fail. Indeed. And so we must endeavor to discover the source of the ether on which the process depends. Do so, and it may present a way to halt the summonings, or perhaps even neutralize the towers entirely. A promising proposal. While you are conducting your investigations, however, we will need to remain vigilant, lest the Telophoroi commit further abductions and summon primals ere we have the means to prevent them. To stand a better chance of keeping our enemy at bay, we would do well to coordinate our defensive efforts, sending reinforcements to assist our neighbors when needed. We, Amalja, would have been overwhelmed were it not for our newfound allies. But say the word, and we shall come. I see we are all in accord. But what are we to call this proud fellowship of ours? I submit that the honor of naming it should go to the Scion whose brave efforts have done no. so much to unite no, Eorzea. No, Emmerich, no. What no. say you, my friend? Don't, no, I, this, no, I, I, don't, ever, uh, what, uh, huh? No, oh god. Um, uh, I would call, uh, one moment, please. Uh, might I suggest the Grand Company of Eorzea? I remember a certain someone pondering it once upon a time, and it seems as fitting a name as any. A fine choice, for there is none here who does not love Eorzea. Aye, in that we shall ever be united. United in our gratitude for the realm that gave us life. Then let it be recorded that on this day, the Grand Company of Eorzea was born. One thing I like about Animo is... She she's really become much of a leader. Like she's there to lead, to speak to, for for the um, for the entire assembly, for the leaders of Aorzean or the Alliance. She's really coming to her. I'm very proud of her. How long have we dreamed of this moment? Uh, and now that it's here, I... Oh, forgive me. Might we speak outside? Uh, Alphano, this is really your dream. <laughs> I, I never actually dreamt of it. Not to say it's not good or anything. It's not really much of my dream. It was your dream. And, and, you know, full support in, in everything. Just... just, just it's... This was a very awkward moment. <laughs> it's a 
pity you took the threat of annihilation for everyone to cast their grievances aside in <laughs> better late than ever, I suppose. Forgive me for observing, but Alphano seems l seems less than jubilant. Might he thoughts be, be accompanied by the fate of poor Arnold? Gran Campe of Eorzea. I wonder what Rael and the other f crystal brains would, would make of it. We have won over the leaders. Now the leaders must win over their own people. No small task, I grant you, but we have come a long way since first we joined with Menphilia to bring an end to summoning. A long, long way. Well now, that we are out of earshot of other delegates, I hope you will forgive me if I speak my mind. Let me begin by saying that I have dreamed of this day since the moment I set foot upon these shores, and I was, yeah, I was as heartened as anyone to see the, the peoples of Eorzea pledge their solidarity. Yet even as they uttered their declarations, all I could think of was the conflict to come, of the sacrifices that would be made, and the lo lives lost, inevitabilities that I still struggle to accept. But at least now there is hope. The formation of the Grand Company of Eorzea is the first step first of many. Many and more. Elder Sitsia, might we be of service? I seek Master Alphino's assistance in a matter involving Gridania's neighbors, the Sylphs. I know that you and yours have long kept a weather eye upon the crystal trade. In the crystal trade the better to predict the coming of the primals, and so you will be familiar with the sylphs of the Ash Crown Consortium. Through their dealings, they have cultivated relations not only with the city-states, but also many other communities besides. Communities, such as the beach spots. Just so, it is our hope that we may make use of the sylphs' established lines of communication to establish the efforts of our new f fellowship. Yet there remain certain practical differences between a trade consortium and a grand company. If the Sylphs are to perform their task effectively, they require the Council of One versed in the operational aspects of an armed force. An armed force founded by the self-same Golden Mine, no less. The Crystal Braves, yes. Forgive me, Master Elfno. I know there was a painful chapter in your life, but the experience may yet be made to serve the realm. <sighs> to my hubris, I plotted a course for the Crystal Braves which stretched far beyond the Order's initial conception, one intended to pave the way for the founding of what I intended to call the Grand Company of Eosia. But my plans all came to naught. Built upon a frail foundation of lofty ideals, the Order was doomed from the first to collapse under the weight of more worldly interests. I have no wish to see this new endeavour suffer the same fate. Maybe I ask too much of you. Not at all. You may count upon my assistance, for what little it is worth. By your leave, I shall prepare a report, including a list of recommendations drawn on the lessons I learned from the failures of the Crystal Brains. You have my gratitude, Master Alphano, and my trust. When your report is ready, pray share it directly with the Sylphs. With your guidance and the earnest efforts of every goodly soul gathered here today, I have no doubt doubt but that our fellowship shall emerge from the shadows of the Telophoroi and Flourish. Until next week, meet my friends. Before committing anything to writing, there are a number of people whose thoughts I would like to hear. Former Braves, you understand. Might you join me in seeking them out? I can't wait for an excuse not to. I can't think of an excuse not to, so. Yes? Well, I shall be grateful for your help, gratefully not. I'll join you if you're planning to uh, canvass the opinions of your former comrades. It'd be a lot quicker if we shared the, risk, the task of questioning them. Then mayhap Graha will lend a hand as well. I shall accompany Thancred back to the Rising Stones. Between us, I dare say we should be able to provide an accurate enough account of the day's events. Hmm. 
You should be glad for your company, Graha. I shall explain the details on the way. It will not be easy to revisit the past, but sometimes one must look back to see the way forward. I take it we shall be paying the Silsa visit. How fascinating it will be to speak with them in person. Though I doubt that conversation can prove rather challenging. So what's the plan, brother of mine? Before discussing the task at hand, I would probably admit that the report I propose is largely written. Not long after the fateful day in Onda, I penned a detailed account of the organization's history, from the events that led to its inception to the failings that brought about its demise. This I did primarily as a means of taking some semblance of responsibility. Never did I mention that it might later be referred to by these, those seeking to form a, form a similar organization. And while I made every attempt to be objective, the account is mine alone. Its events viewed from my singular perspective. For it to be of use, however, be brought into a comp compass the viewpoints of all involved. Only then can I answer what seems to be the crucial question, namely, why, after the Crystal Braves disbanded, did some members choose to remain with us while others did not? I see. You think the answer will tell us something about the nature of the ties that bind our new grand company together? and that this knowledge might help us to pr prevent it from falling apart when those bonds are inevitably tested. That is my hope, yes, but the question I would ask, uh, ask are uncomfortable to some. As the former commander of the Crystal Braves, I doubt that those who abandon the cause would welcome my inquiries. Then Graha and I will just have to try. Meanwhile, the two of you can talk to the ones who kept the faith. A fine suggestion. Have care. However, certain of my former comrades are of questionable character. So keep your wits about you and let us reconvene in Gridania later on. If you have no objections, I would mind begin by speaking to Royale and Eliane. If memory serves me, the two will be attending an intelligence briefing at Castrum Orient. Let us se uh, seek them out there. Ah, look who it is. And what brings you two here? Wonder if anything to do with the big meeting, would it? In a matter of speaking, I've been assigned a task, you see, for which I require the assistance of former members of the Crystal Braves. Exposition. Yet you want to know why we decided to stick with the signs, eh? Hmm. Ain't an easy thing to put into words, that. As Rael will, Rael will attest, I spent a long time agonizing over my failure to alert you to the traitors in our midst. For my negligence, I was c captured along with many others, and we were powerless to present the tragedies that ensued. Now the day goes by that I do not think back on those eventful days. By joining the Scions, I hope to redeem myself, and I will continue to serve the cause as long as I am able. But that wasn't my only reason. When you were fully, when we were fully reunited at the Rising Stones, you refused to blame anyone but yourself for the fa fall of the Crystal Braves, and in spite of everything that has happened, everything you've suffered, you took us back without a moment's hesitation. We would not have blamed you had you turned us away, but when you gave us your trust instead, what else could we do but try, but try to repay it? Nothing, that's what. As for my own tale, well, I always felt the science was something in common with me, old crew. The duty of the strong is to protect the weak. That was our creed. I still strive to live by it to this day. But as time goes up, 
goes on, I learned that strength comes in many shapes and sizes, from Hori Boulder to Mr. Sataru. We are all all of us got something, Alpha. And not one of us is going to doing it for personal gain, because we believe there's more important things than that. Things worth protecting, which is what being a sign is all about. I I am a lot of words. Thank you, my friends. To hear this from you means more than you know. Forgive me, Eskos, could you? Why do you think the Crystal Blades ended in failure? Well, it's founding ideals for something to be proud of, but ideals alone don't make a crew. For every swab who signed up with good intentions, there was another who was only out for the coin, the glory, or both. Ours was quite a disparate band, but while it, w it will never forgive Ilward the fact that we managed to function at all, it it was in large part to his efforts. Just a pity he was doing it all for the wrong reasons, eh? Only takes one bad bad apple to say, and the braves had a barrel for him. Not like the Scions. It might look like a ragtag band of misses, but deep down we all got that sense that shared sense of purpose. And why? Because Tataru shifted out <laughs> sifted out all the glory hunters before they made it through the door. I see. So while our ranks comprise a div diverse range of people, each of their own individual strengths, we're all united in purpose. Thank you, my friends. With your permission, I shall make a record of our discussion and refer to it when drafting my recommendations. Till we meet again. After the company of heroes went their separate ways, they did try working on my own for a bit. But I admit, it was a nice being able to pick my own battles. But if you want to make a real difference, you need to find a good crew and stick with them. S Speaking of former Crystal Braves, I have not seen Ergmus of late make constantly away on missions as he is. I wonder how he fares. Well, I think we have taken enough of our colleagues' time, and I'm con conscious of the that the less life-affirming testimonies await. Let us make our way to Gridania and hear what the others have learned. Thanks to Tataru's ever dependable intelligence, we managed to track down a handful of former braves without great detail difficulties. Some were forthright, right, others less so, but we heard enough to form a picture. I must warn you, Alfredo, some of the, their comments were harsh. I can well imagine, but their opinions are no less vital to my report. I seek the unvarnished truth. Thank you. I shall set about adding your findings to, to my own at once. In the meantime, pray go ahead to Little Solace and seek out Elder Frixio. I will join you anon.
Oh, welcome, brave yo, brave one and friends of brave one. How good to see you walking once again so soon after the meeting. Ah, uh, it's been a while since we last spoke. Indeed it has, though the palace was very pretty, the media was far too noisy for this one. So many shouting ones, and squawking ones, and cheering ones, but no chance, with no chance of free carefree conversation. Still, this one is pleased, all ones can be friends. Horned one Kani Sana said that walking ones would be coming to little solace. Imperial ones also invaded Silflands and abducted many of these one these ones, so these ones will be glad to bear messages between fighting friendly ones. That is heartening to hear, Elder. I would require all ones to work in unison to stop the Telophory. These ones will try very hard, of course, but in matters of war these ones have little experience. Any advice walking ones can provide would be most welcome. Oh, another another pretty silver haired one. In quite a hurry, it seems. Alize, you must come quickly. Oh, what does it matter, Alphano? Don't tell me you cannot you cannot read my handwriting. What no, uh twin adder officer accosted me as I was about to set out. Charlie and has sent an envoy who is due to arrive in Cordania at any moment. An envoy? Could it be that Kryle has managed to sway the forum? We shall know soon enough, but there is more. The envoy has requested that the two of us attend a meeting with the Elder Seedseer. Really? I can see why they would want Scions to be present, but us specifically? Wait. It isn't who I think it is. It is. I could scarce believe, believe it myself. Once I inquired of the envoy's identity, I was told that it would be... The unfortunate Livio. Your father? Well now, the fact that a serving member of the forum has journeyed here would be a surprise enough, but him? Quite. I gleam from, from this that they were taking the matter seriously. That may be, but why him? And not one of the other 98 forum members, unless he volunteered for it. I have seen some time since you last saw your father, has it not? Could it be he was concerned for your well-being? Perhaps, but he has always been reluctant to discuss his work with us. Indeed, and whenever we write to our parents, it is invariably our mother who replies. Nevertheless, I welcome the opportunity to meet with him after so long, even if it's secondary to his true purpose here. Elder Frixia, loath I am to cut our visit short, we must report to Grania. Gridania, please accept my apologies along with my report. And never mind, there will be time to talk later. This one won't won't keep walking ones from uh, from more urgent matters. Go. The audience will be held at the Lotus Stand, where the Elder Seeds are awaits you now. Let us be on our way. During my time in Charlien, I, I heard much of Fonchino, of Fonchino Levieux. He is a gifted speaker, known amongst many, many things for the unpromising application of foreign policy. 99 may seem like a rather lot of members, but before the forum was founded, every person of age in Charlien was given equal say in its governance. Many of the institutions that were still active today are established by the people's vote, not not least the studium, 
I said Alize and I were constantly reminded during our time there is an example of what is can be achieved through absolute democracy. After all this time away, it would be good to see Father again, even in his official meeting. My friends, I thank you all for coming so swiftly. Word and Master uh, Fortunal's visit took us quite by surprise. When the Alliance granted Mistress Kyle permission to request Charlene's aid, we did not anticipate so prompt a reply, much less that it would be delivered by a member of the Forum. What the nature of that reply may be, we shall soon discover. Elder Seeds here. I thank you for granting me this audience. I am Fortuno Leveilleur, here in my capacity as representative of the Forum. It is I who should thank you, Master Fortuno, for journeying so far and so swiftly. Would that our first meeting could have been under happier circumstances. It has been too long, Father. You look well. As do you both. Amelians will be glad to hear that you are taking care of yourselves. How is Mother? She misses you terribly, of course, but is otherwise a picture of health. Circumstances apart, I'm grateful that our meeting has afforded me the chance to be reunited with my children at long last. And I believe I also owe you thanks for the hospitality you showed my father, Louiswa, during his sojourn in Eorzea. All thanks we owe to him. In the days prior to the seventh umbral calamity, it was your father's tireless efforts which granted us a means to vanquish the primals. Were it not for him, our strength would have been quite spent by the time the Empire arrived. That Gridania still stands is in large part his achievement. He was a great man. He would doubtless have been moved to hear you say so. I must confess, however, that I opposed his decision to intervene. And my position remains unchanged. To chart the course of history, not to change it. I am familiar with the Charlian stance. It is more than that. It is our way of life, who we are. But I came here not to deliver a lecture, but the Forum's answer to your request. Charlian will under no circumstances intervene in the conflict between Eorzea and the Garlian Empire. May I ask for what reason the Forum has come to this decision? The final days spell the end not only for Eorzea, but the entire world. The final days? Pray spare me your hyperbole. This conflict is no more than the latest in a series of petty squabbles between yourselves and Garlemald. One in which Charlian will take no part. If the final days were truly upon us, we would know. Father, you must ask the Forum to reconsider. You may feel safe on your little island across the waves, but if you imagine the Telophoroi will leave you be, you are mistaken. They mean to kill us all, themselves included. Alphano is right. We have seen what the enemy is capable of, the lengths to which they'll go. This is no time to turn a blind eye. If Eorzea falls, so too will Charlian. So if you truly love our homeland, you will join us. Now, before it's too late. <sighs> I 
I thought you knew better than to raise your voice to your elders. It seems I was wrong. Wrong to ever let you leave, Charlian. I consoled myself that your time abroad would instill in you some hint of restraint, of discipline. But I see now that Eorzea has made fools of you both. Have you forgotten why it was that I so vehemently opposed your grandfather's departure? For all his wisdom, his only solution was to go to war. Death, devastation, ruin. Even those who claim victory are scarred for life. What prize could ever justify such sacrifice? It is the duty of the learned to avert such tragedy. By fanning the flames of war, you forsake all you once held dear. There's no other plight of those, those one might consider insane. It's not wisdom, it's indolence. I see your friend shares your misguided ideals. But unlike him, you should know better. By espousing such barbaric notions, you subvert the teachings of Charlian and place all we have worked for in jeopardy. Alfino, Alizé, as of this moment, you shall no longer bear the name of Leveilleur. What? Father. How you choose to live your lives is no longer my concern. If you wish to walk the path of ruin, I will not stand in your way. Master Fulchino, while Charlian may have no intention of intervening in this conflict, we can still part as friends. Will you not stay and speak with us, that we might learn of Charlian's hopes for the morrow? I have said what I came here to say. Any further discussion would be meaningless. Father! Up Wait! Don't bother, Alizé! How can you stand there and watch him walk away? How can you let this happen? Kind of makes me wish that the Charlie would be put to the ground as a sacrifice in the middle of the final days. It was not so long ago that we had a friend in New Bernstein, and so I clung to the hope that she would get land of her strength. But when she forsook her Dravania, it would seem she would face her control. In order to avoid conflict and violence, the Fallen went so far as to order the abandonment of the entire city state. The refusal to aid us now is, I'm sorry to say, entirely consistent with those thoughts of the Is that what he came here to say? That we're all fools for t having the temerity, temerity to uh, defend ourselves against the Telophoroi? And as for the rest, like it or not, that was the Fallen's decision. To watch from afar while the Orzia burns. Father was but the messenger. As he handed down the judgment, I could think of nothing to say that could possibly sway him. I still can't. To have prolonged the discussion would have changed little. For it is not only Master Fortuno who, would be, who must be persuaded, but the Fallen as a whole. The decision was made ere your father crossed the sea. Nor is it to be like to be changed, and so we shall face the Telophoroi without their aid. Forgive me if I had no intention of help, 
forgive me, but if they had no intention of helping us, then why did they go through the trouble of sending an envoy in the first place? Why did they not simply s keep their counsel as they want to do? Essegos, has Master Fulcino arrived yet? Yeah, she was just here and was an idiot. Then it is as I feared, my efforts were in vain. I pleaded our case to as many foreign members as I could, but they flatly refused to discuss the matter. No, it's not exactly true. I should rather say they ignored every word I said in the subject, without ex exception. It was almost unnerving. Could it be that they were hiding something from us, that they might go some way to explain Master Fortuno's performance? When he said they would know if the final days were upon us, I dismissed it as pride. But what if they genuinely believe that they know how the world will end and simply disagree with us about the circumstances? That I don't know, but something tells me they are not as unconcerned about the Telophoroi as they claim. If the threat weren't real, why else would they be so standoffish and secretive? If we'd very much like to delve deeper into this, I'm afraid I'm exhausted every avenue of inquiry. Nor have I fared any better with, with my other mission, researching Heidelin and the Ethereal Sea. I tried enlisting the help of experts in the field, but it appears the Forum has forbidden anyone from cooperating with us. Obstruction at every turn. So it would seem, but I don't lose heart just yet. With all the knowledge and acquaintances we have well, between us, we shall find a way forward. In the end, I would like you all to join me here, when the time is right, of course. I'm aware the matters in Eorzea stand at a nice edge, but with your permission, I can at least start making the necessary arrangements. Uh, well, there's one to take care of here first. <laughs> After which, assisting you would be a sweet relief, I'm sure. Oh. When you attend to matters heroical, I shall see about <laughs> about securing an entry for you and all, and will let you know when <laughs> everything is in order. Take care in the meantime, won't you? The speculations give me cause for hope, yet that if these seeds will bear fruit, I cannot say. While it's possible the Shalians hide some secret truth from us, there will be no certainty that its exposure will prompt in them a change in heart. And so for the present, we, we must needs confront the plight in which we find ourselves. The Forum has refused our request for aid, and it falls to us alone to contend with the Telophore. Even with all of Eosia standing united, there is no guarantee that we will prevail. What does Shardian intend to do if we fail? No gold that time, right? Penny Senna seems determined not to let the disappointment of Charlene's rejection distract her from the task at hand. With this, we get reward the shush. Well, Charlene's stance is indeed disappointing. We cannot allow ourselves to be distracted from the challenge before us. There is much and more to be done. I shall begin by sharing the forum's response with our counterparts in the Alliance. Meanwhile, I would ask that the Scions... Grave tidings, walking ones! Grave tidings! Grave, grave tidings! Calm yourself, my gentle friend. What has occurred? These ones uh, who went to see Feathered Ones send terrible news, destroying ones that ones have appeared at Xenophall. Destroying ones and captured ones or even fighting godly ones. Feathered Ones didn't stand a chance and were sent flapping and squawking. When did this happen? Is it too late to help them? Too late, yes. Much too late. But luckily, destroying ones... We're only passing through and continue on west. Feather ones who did not fight were left unharmed. West? That would be Curthus.
My lady, the Iscadians report that the Telophorae emerged from the eastern highlands of Curthus and are marching at speed. Though the purpose is yet to be determined, the Cagno Flats as would seem their most likely de destination. Lord Emmerich has already dispatched his forces and requests our immediate support. Tell him he shall have it. The time has come for the Grand Company of, of Eorzea to prove its worth. Well, may happen is mercy that we do not have the time to stew about our misfortunes. Come, my friends, let us make haste to Cartano. Wait, this one almost forgot. The storing ones were said to be led by a cackling rope one. This one would see that all walking ones knew. Farewell. Van Daniel? Who else? It was only a matter of time before that gritty maniac showed himself again. I shall have an airship ready to bear you to Cartano. Pray see to your preparations or report to the landing with all haste. At once, my lady. Let us away. Take a moment, all right. Asagos, it seems Fodoli here has come all the way to Catania to find us. We'll explain the situation, but she insists her business is hurt. Aye, it'll be o over soon, then you can shut up and come with me. Arnvold! I can't tell you how good it is to see you! It arrived a lot sooner than expected, eh? The day I craned my neck up at you. Only because you're sitting down? Unless... Afraid so. The Chirurgeons say I may never walk again. Come on, Alfino. It could be worse. Besides... I didn't come here to dampen the mood. Quite the opposite. All I've ever wanted was to fight for a cause I believe in. But my fighting days are over. So I want you to fight in my stead. Be the hero I can't. I am no hero. That's what they all say, though. No one ever calls themselves a hero. Even the ones who eat primals for breakfast. It's for others to decide. Look, Alfino. You already are a hero. To me and countless others. We see you doing your damnedest to protect us all. And you're not alone, are you? There are people who believe in you, just as you believe in them. Indeed. 
things may have changed, but the adventure isn't over yet. I know what's at stake, and how many people are depending on you. But I believe in you. Believe that you'll see it through. That's why I'm entrusting my dreams to you. Like Albert and Owley once entrusted their dreams to me. There was a time when I would have borne the weight of such expectations without a second thought. But now, I know just how heavy that burden can be. To tell the truth, I'm beginning to wonder if I chose the right path. Sacrifices will inevitably be made for the sake of the ideals I uphold. Maybe I am not the person I thought I was. The person you think I am. I wouldn't presume to tell you. But I will say this. In spite of everything, you've come this far. The road ahead might not always be clear, but you've never been one to give up or take the easy way out. And everything you do, you do for others. For a brighter future. I'm proud to call you my friend. Well, I've said my piece, so I'll let you go. I know you've got more important things to be doing. Just... give what I've said some thought, alright? Maybe our well will walk again. Hope. I shall, my friend. And we will meet again soon, I promise. Nothing left for me to do but wave and smile. You've got a pretty narrow view of what it means to be a hero, do you know that? You think they're all forged in the fires of battle? That it's all about being brave and killing villains? Alpha No and the others will carry on their fight. But theirs isn't the only one. There are other ways you can make a difference. If you stop feeling sorry for yourself and put your bloody mind to it. There's not much chance of me living the quiet life with you around, is there? If you're content to twiddle your thumbs thinking of what might have been, that's your lookout. But I reckon you've got some fight left in you. And I reckon you might be right. If there's a way I can still help my friends, I'll bloody well find it. Optimist in this case. Oh, well, how about that? Not that doubt that Fedola contained the Kyrugians, obtained the Kyrugians' permissions before bringing our involved halfway across the realm, and solely to deliver a message at that. They should both have known better. But what better? What's done is done, and I will not forget his words. <coughs> After Pegglethon, I assumed that Talofroy would continue to target settlements, but it's plain they considered to considered Cinefall a mere obstacle on the road to Cartano. What then draws them to the flats? We must keep a close eye on the movements. Duty! You, you can tell me later what was 
what that was all about, but judging by the set of Alphino's jaw, it appears to have done him some good. Sankard and the others have already left, left the Rising Stones, and according to the communications officer, Amolja and Cobalt forces are also bound for Carlton as we speak. They mean to keep the promise they made in our amigo, and we must do the same by saving as many of their tempered kin as possible. Anyway, the airship is ready to depart. We should get going. Upon joining the Battle of Cartano, several uh, cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to p participate in the battle and view these scenes in their entirety. Your progress through the battle will be saved at certain points. In the event that you are defeated, you will be able to try again from the most recent of these. Of these. Please note that if you enter battles associated with other, other quests or log out from the game, this progress will be lost. So basically, focus. Alright, I'm just gonna keep the volume up because I think there's a bunch of, uh, voice acted segments. I think. My fellow Scions, as I am sure you will have heard, we can expect no help from Charlian, nor are we any closer to discerning the Telophoroi's grand design. And now, our adversary moves against us in unprecedented numbers, compelling us to answer in kind. The outlook, in short, is bleak. Yet though our foes are many, and we but few, we may still tip the balance in Eorzea's favor. Of course. We will do what we always do. Deal with the ones our allies can't. A less than daunting prospect, judging by your expression. Could it be that you've dispelled your lingering doubts, Alphino? Oh, I doubt I ever will. But as my friends have kindly reminded me, I have come this far, and that must count for something. Gods be good, Alphino. That's what we've been trying to tell you all along. <laughs> for one so bright, you can be remarkably dim at times. There is such a thing as overthinking, you know. Might I suggest that we continue this conversation after the battle? It would appear that Telophoroi have already arrived. I'll do what I can to cure the Tempered, but they'll have to be incapacitated first. Have care, my friends, for none can say wherefore our foe did choose this fateful field to be our battleground. Whatever may transpire, pray grant him not the pleasure of deterring you.
Alright, I can't read it. Across the field, Valley Day and Draw takes the take the fight to the club. Draha is in paladin form. Alright, what do we have? We've got the their third me. the beginning.
see that. The cliff, yes. How, how worried should we be? Listen well and judge for yourself. Though I can see ethereal currents, I have not uh, thoroughly examined those that flow through the heart of cotton. But now that I am here, it's unclear. The flats conceal an ethereal conf confluence, like to the pillars of the Azim Steppe, yet but greater in scale to the far greater. The glyphs that fend anyone who've convert each into their very next. Reached into their very midst. And I believe I know their purpose. Should the lunar primals destroy them, it would spark a chain reaction with the potential to obliterate the confluence entirely. The resultant disruption in the flow of ether would be so chaos among the elements, and prompting earthquakes, floods, and tempests large enough to lay waste to the realm. That he would do go so far cometh he would go so far cometh a little surprise cometh a little surprise. We must needs protect the confluence at all costs. Defeat Lunar Odin and defend uh, Ah yeah, Rory on Jay, we have the World of Crowns combo. Aspect of Helios and fixed side.
Nimm mal Grahat hier, da haben wir es eben.
the self-same moment, he stands shoulder to shoulder with Alphago and Astinian, resolves to lay Lunar to Freak low. No more role playing.
And thus another plan went up in smoke. I am beginning to see why Lord Xenos thinks so highly of you. Not that this changes anything, you understand. You have merely earned yourself a stay of execution. How fair the tempered. We've treated as many as we can, but some were beyond help. Do not hang your head so, brave scions. Though not all of our captured brethren could be saved, we are grateful for those whose minds have been restored. You could do no more, and that is enough. So please hold your heads high. been quicker, but I'll do better next time. Thank you for your kind words. They mean a lot. A victory at great cost, but a victory nonetheless. We must stay strong and press on. Isn't that right? Very good. To the very end.
all the way through the endless queue. And Walker is in November. What are we going to do till November? We Kind of as if one world's uh, end does a new beginning, so it's gonna be so scattered. Probably be able to see more as the content is coming out. We shall live. I just started playing. Well, that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow. I will be streaming some Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, but I think we will log into Elegos and uh, redo some job quests. Just kind of get some experience on what the other jobs were. Um, we didn't get to see the Astrologian. Uh, there were the final job quests for the ones that I have at 80 that I could do. But uh, we're not fully done we've got one more scene but that's basically the plan is basically trying to get all my jobs to 80 before and walker on elegos and we'll use him as uh just kind of run through all the job quests did the role quest so i'll probably skip those should have seen your face when lord emmerich turned up on our doorstep did none of you think to send word he was bringing you home As close as the battle, uh, at the close of the battle, when the, pop, the clouds parted and the moon shone down on us all, I cannot well express how it felt. Somehow it seemed more beginning than an ending. The temper that we were able to treat will be taken to the city-states for observation. As soon as the Alliance is satisfied they are fully recovered, they will be free to return home. It was decent of Lord Emmerich to uh, bear us home aboard his airship. The gods know, only know how we would have squeezed this many people onto the Bonanza. Uh, many, many though the enemy are, their numbers consisted largely of tempered beastmen with a few lunar primals to keep things interesting. The guardians themselves ventured little and lost less. It has ever been the Empire's way to have others fight their battles, but even they would blush at the Tolothroy's use of tempered slaves. The Carthano Flats seem fated to pay a prominent role in the history of the realm, do they not? I wonder, might the abundance of ether that floweth through the region have led the Alleghans to a tomb Omega there? Throughout the battle, I could not shake the feeling that all present were performing for the amusement of Van Daniel, nor did his blithe reaction to the latest defeat give me cause to think otherwise. I can only conclude that such failures have little consequence to his broader scheme, whatever it may be. I will recon 
recommend that the Alliance keep a closer watch over Cartenu. The Talafari may have failed in their attempt to destroy the Confluence this time, but there's a lot to stop them trying again. Nope. I trust you all enjoyed a comfortable flight aboard the pride of the Ishgardian fleet. Lest you worry, the Bonanza has been towed to a nearby location to be retrieved at your convenience. So how we take care of that? You have thought of everything, Lord Emmerich, and may I say, say how much I appreciate the hospitality you afforded us on the way home. Nothing of it. Our destination lay in the same direction and afforded me the perfect opportunity to learn how my errant friend has been since last he took his leave. It would seem you have finally found a place to settle down. <laughs> I nearly grew weary of wandering the Far East. Returning to more serious matters, while the Telophori have been driven from Cartano, it is like that the bulk of their forces yet remain. When the evidence of the Grand Company of Eorzea's first joint military operation, however, I am confident that we have the potential to meet such threats head on, even without the aid of you and yours. As such, while our forces keep the Delafroy Bay, I would ask that you apply your talents to the task of neutralizing the towers. A sensible division of labor. While the towers remain, so too will the threat of the Lunar Primals. And given our experience in the field of aetherology, we are better qualified to find a solution. Glad we are, especially should it happen to lie beyond the Alliance's dominion. There is a time and a place for formal investigations, of course, but certain secrets are wont to hide where only enterprising individuals may venture. I could not agree more. There is none better suited to this task, nor any other, any upon whom I would rather rely. On behalf of the Alliance, I thank you look forward to receiving any information you were able to recover. With that, I must take my leave. Should you have need of assistance, pray do not hesitate to ask. Fare you well, my friends. I confess, I had hoped to be able to study the towers more closely, vital as they plainly are to the Telophroi's plans. If we can discern their ultimate function, we will be one step closer to understanding our enemy's grand scheme. Should we succeed in neutralizing them, of course, it is all but certain that the Telophoroi will mount an all-out evasion. And then it will begin. The one who waits at the heart of the chaos will come for us. For you. Yet in the end, our true nemesis may be the calamity to end all calamities, the final days themselves. Yes, all right, all right, Alphano. We, we need a plan, not portents. As Thankred so eloquently pointed out, we are in the position to seek information from all manner of places, not least. Charlene. According to Kryle, the, for, uh, the forum has been more secretive of the late. While this may be related to the appearance of the Telophoroi, which remains a matter of speculation. But one thing is clear, the Forum is determined to keep us from discovering the truth. Master Fortuno, his performance at the Lotus Stands was enough to convince me of that. A matter f beareth further investigation, I do heartily concur. Nor can I think of a more promising place to look for the answers we seek on a matter of the towers. Charlene hath ever been the wellspring of aetherological aetherolo knowledge. I care not where we go. Here or there, my lance will be ready. What of you, Eskos? Might you be persuaded to join us? Um, um, uh, and I don't want breakfast because it's... Have we no other choice? <laughs> to be frank, I myself would sooner plumb for a tropical paradise, but Kryle does need our help, and who knows where the tra trail might lead us. It appears we are in agreement. We have but to wait for Kryle to secure the necessary permissions. In the meantime, there is a matter I would investigate. 
because it involved tall structures. By a strange coincidence, it does. At present, I was only creeping suspicion, but with your help, I would soon find out whether my fears are warranted. You have blamed the emote. Shush. Meanwhile, in the Guardian capital. Oh, Xenos chose the scythe. <gasps> Those Aorzeans certainly are a stubborn bunch. Though I suppose you knew that already. My plan to redirect the ether from Cartano came to a rather less than satisfactory conclusion. It was, in many respects, an abject failure. Which does, of course, raise the question of where we are going to procure the requisite amount. The obvious solution would be to draw on resources a little closer to home, though that would require our dreamer to dream a trifle more deeply? So be it. The dreamer will not complain. Then let us begin the preparations at once. With the gateway of the gods complete, all that remains is to gather the necessary ether, and our prize shall be within reach. The time has come to fulfill your heart's desire, my desire, to relieve those wretched creatures of their meaningless existence. While I await you, I shall drink a sea of souls and gorge myself upon the darkened moon. Then you shall come to me, all roiling rage and rancor. And the stars shall bear witness to our final contest. As I thought, the ethereal currents have been disturbed here too. It was the same in Thanalan. Make that every location we surveyed. And the strength of each current has diminished dramatically, far more than could be attributed to a natural occurrence. What tidings bringest thou from Dravania? We took a number of readings, and noticed that the closer we were to the tower, the lower the etheric density became. In short... The towers are drawing upon the land's ether, which would explain how they were able to carry out the summonings.
Our allies must be informed of this. We should return to the Rising Stones and have Tataru relay our findings to them. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Darkness, Darkness comes. 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 And with, and with it, it, the end, the, end. the, fate, the fate, fate of the star, of the star is, in is in your hands. hands. Everything all right back there? That was an ominous. At solemn dawn, grim pur purpose shines and gazes cast toward the moonlight sky. Thus does our final curtain rise, your steps to guide what ends uh, something. I couldn't read it fast. Enough. I guess we already sent out all the crew, so... I think I'll pull up my uh, list of jobs and do them in order of alphabetically start working on those so should be interesting especially when we get to the uh, crafting and gathering jobs I'm not sure how that all all that works for New Game Plus, but it'll be interesting. I'll figure it out. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. And we'll be in Elias.